Are you a man looking for an intensive program to help you overcome sexually addictive behaviors? Gateway to Freedom is your answer. Gateway to Freedom is a three-day workshop for men seeking to overcome any destructive sexual habits. Whether married, single, or divorced, Gateway to Freedom will help men regain hope for a new life of purity and real contentment. The workshop is conducted by experts in the field of sexual addiction recovery with decades of combined experience. Read testimonials of workshop alumni at gatewaymen.com. Get all the info and register online at gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-49-PURITY. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop. I want to personally invite you to be part of our next workshop coming up July 22nd through the 24th in Colorado. So call us today at 1-800-49-PURITY or visit gatewaymen.com. Welcome to Pure Sex Radio, training men, educating women. Are you ready to get real and start living each day in purity? This dynamic program is designed to educate, encourage, and equip listeners with the tools necessary for living a life of sexual purity. Pure Sex Radio brings you the best in mobile talk radio. Listen to real life struggles, learn how to overcome lust, pornography, and sex addiction, and get serious about purity. Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. We're glad to have you here with us. My name is Jonathan, and I'm here with uh, Jared. Jared, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, Jonathan. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so we're gonna, we've got a special guest here today that um, is the founder of God Over Porn, and he's going to be sharing with us in a little bit some of his story and, and some of his ministry. But before we dive into that, I just want to remind you, as we do periodically, that we are a listener-supported broadcast. So the only way that these programs get distributed out through podcasts and on traditional airwaves is just when listeners like you come alongside and partner with us. So if you'd like to learn about the ways that you can uh, come alongside and partner with this ministry, just go to puresexradio.com and click on the Donate button. And also, we finally uh, stepped into the 21st century. We do have a, a, uh, a Twitter account now, and so if you go to uh, at Pure Sex Radio and follow us, you can get all the broadcasts and just keep up with some things that, that are going on with the radio program. So, Jared, I would love for our listeners to be able to just kind of hear a little bit of your history and, and how you even got into this kind of ministry that you're in, um, and so just let our listeners get to know you a little bit. All right. Well, my name is Jared Miller Sr., and I am 28 years old, and I became a Christian when I was 22 years old, and that's the same time I got married, uh, and I have two children, two uh, wonderful children. They're twins. They're six years old now, and I basically I was introduced to pornography at a fairly young age. I was familiar with it around the time I was maybe 12. You know, my older brother, he had an addiction to it. And so, but at the age of 12, I was never really curious about it. I just knew what it was. And so my Mm -hmm. peers would just make jokes about it. And so I just thought it was, I, I just looked down upon it. But it wasn't until I was maybe about 15 or 16 years old that that curiosity peaked. And I actually viewed it and indulged in it from that point on um <clears throat> and so it's been a battle for you know 10 plus years and so now just by the grace of god you know i'm just able to walk in liberty and i just strive to help others do the same so what um what were some of the things that like when you started getting involved in pornography what kind of effect did that have not just on you personally but did it have any kind of effect on your relationships on your work. I mean, did it did it, did it affect your life in other ways than just saying, "Oh man, I'm I'm kind of privately looking at porn." Uh, <clears throat> yes, it it affected my entire life. Like it it 
it was like a cancer that it started off small, but it just spread to the point where it affected me in every aspect of my life, from my relationships with people, uh, with women, uh, at the workplace. So I felt like I had to have it all the time. It didn't matter where I was. I was always viewing it at some point. It, it literally got to a point where it consumed me. Mm -hmm. What was your background uh, like in your family as it pertained to God and church and religion? I mean, did you have any kind of, of what was your understanding maybe of the gospel and um, and at what point did that kind of intersect your life where you were struggling with porn? Um, well, yes, I grew up in a religious background. You know, my grandmother still to this day, she's an evangelist. She's she has a strong call to go out into the streets and, you know, minister to those and get them into the church so that they can be discipled and they can grow into the knowledge of the Lord. Um, my mother, I remember she taught us all how to pray. Uh, we went to church every Sunday, you know, just until, you know, we were teenagers, you know, 17, 18 years old. We mm -hmm. just started making that decision that, you know, we're going to go on our own terms. Um, and so by the time I was maybe even 16, 17, I would say that I uh, did not want anything to do with, with the Lord. You know, I wanted to have my own life. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But at the same time, I always knew that Jesus was the only way. I knew mm -hmm. that he was the only way to eternal life, and I knew that without him that I would perish. And so I always had that in my mind and in my heart, even though um, I was living in sin. Mm-hmm. So what happened, uh, so when you started using pornography, it sounds like there was kind of a convergence there, a similar time frame of when you really started indulging in porn and deciding, hey, I want to do things on my own. Uh, do, you, do you think those were connected? Um, no, because I feel like, I, feel like I, I suppressed him so much. You know, I suppressed God. I, I knew that he had always been calling me. I just... I didn't want anything to do with him. So when I would view porn, like, I didn't have this, like, conviction that um, I knew it was wrong because, obviously, we, I believe we all know it's wrong because we do it in secret. And so we want to do it. It's private. And so I, but the thing is, I didn't have him in mind, like, oh, he's he's not pleased with this. I never had that in mind. I just mm -hmm. always, if anything, I was just concerned that I would get caught. That, sure. That that someone will catch me doing it, but I never had him in mind as far as uh, this is dishonoring him and this is not pleasing him. I just thought that it was something that you know I can do and I can stop whenever I wanted to. At, at what point did your um, did you meet your wife and and how did that did that have any effect on your use of porn or did you just go into deeper secrecy? So what was kind of what was that like getting into a relationship with her? Well, yes. Uh, my wife and I, we've been together for almost 10 years. We met in 2007, and it's just it's strange how we, I, I, was, I don't want to say strange how we met, but it's funny because uh, this was during the time when MySpace was very popular, and so um, I actually had a crush on her sister in high school somewhat. And so I was on her sister's MySpace page, and so I happened to see my future wife on her top eight. She was actually number one on her top eight, and so I've seen her, and I said, wow, you know, I'm going to reach out to her. You know, my wife is actually uh, almost 10 years um, older than me. And so I, I told a, another friend of mine, I said, hey, I'm going to reach out to her. And he dared me that he said I wouldn't. So to make a long story short, I did. This was in 2007. And we pretty much, we hit it off pretty quickly. Um, pornography didn't really have an effect on our relationship at that time. It was only until we moved in together that um, it became an issue. And so I tried to get her to understand that my relationship with pornography did not have anything to do with her. So it was almost like, hey, you know, it's not like I don't want to be with you in any kind of way, but my relationship with pornography is just that. It's my relationship with pornography. I don't want you to really intrude in that. Please understand where I'm coming from. So she tried to, but she could never she could never do it. She could never understand it, and she never approved of it. So yeah, it and, and really, how many women really are going to, be able to relate to that. I mean, you know, how many how many women are going to take that? I was, oh, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. I get it. I mean, just go, go ahead and have your relationship with pornography. And it's almost as if you're 
in some way, it, it'd be the, the equivalent, I believe, of saying, hey, listen, I, I want to also have re- a relationship with Susie over here. Um, you're okay with me continuing to have a relationship with her, right? Even though we're in a relationship. I mean, I think it is of that order, the way that we get entangled into pornography. It really is truly like a mistress. And so if you think about it, what you're, what you were asking of her, that's a pretty tall order to ask her to be okay with your pornography as if you would, as if she would be okay with you having a mistress. Right. And I never seen it that way um, <clears throat> at that time. I didn't see it that way. I just saw it as just, you know, this is not, it's harmless. It's not like I'm with another woman. This is just people on the screen. You know, mm-hmm. I'll never be with them. And so I, I tried to get her to understand it for, so, and for some time. She tried. Like she, I will say that she tried to. And, of course, this is before Christ, before we knew him and everything. Um, but, you know, she never could. You know, she was set up like monitoring devices on the computer that I did not know about. Mm-hmm. And so she so she would confront me. I, I remember us being together. We would have extremely high cable bills because I was spending so much money buying porn on cable. And <clears throat> it became a serious problem. Mm-hmm. So then at what point did, um, like at what point then did Christ enter into this relationship or enter into your, into your life in a, in a way that was, uh, real? Um, well, I would say that he started working on her first. Um, and that was, that was sometime in 2009. And this was before our twins were born. Our twins were born in September of 2009. And so I remember 2009 was a very tumultuous year for me. Um, I was also involved in street gangs. And so um, I, during that time, I was in a very, I was living a very dangerous lifestyle in addition to my struggles with pornography and everything else. um, I was living a very dangerous lifestyle. And so my girlfriend at the time, my wife, she was pregnant and she was almost due to have our twins. And so what ended up happening is there would be women from the church that would reach out to her and invite her to come to church. And I also had relatives in North Carolina from, on my father's side of the family who would call and speak to her just to console her because I would be gone like all day and all night and she would not hear from me. So she would be concerned that something happened to me in the streets. And so um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. they started reaching out to her and be praying with her over the phone, inviting her to come to church. And I didn't want any part of that. I would tell her, I said, look, listen, <clears throat> if you want to, do that, then we're going to have to go our separate ways because I'm not trying to live for Jesus right now. I want to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2009, but it wasn't until like 2010 where Christ really, he revealed himself to us in a real way Mm -hmm. where we could not, it was undeniable. And that's, that is, so it was just amazing at that point because I wasn't seeking him. I wasn't in the place where I said, okay, I surrender. I'm ready to seek you. It just happened. Mm-hmm. And so then what what then happened to your life at that point? Like at, at what point did you know Christ entering your life cause you to have to take a really serious look at your porn problem? And what was that like for you? Um, well, it was actually during the time that... Um, God Over Porn started, because we got saved in 2010, but we didn't start God Over Porn until 2013, and it was 2013 where I realized that, you know, this is something, this is a serious problem where, like, in, like in 2010 when we first got saved, it was almost like a honeymoon phase that I had with the Lord. It was like I was in the Word all the time, just my wife, our children, you know, we, we were... <clears throat> reading the Word, because I have stepchildren as well, and we were in the Word, and just all the time we're praying, and it was just almost like a newfound love, and, but mm-hmm. then pornography just resurfaced, and so it became a serious issue, but it wasn't until 2013 where I said, okay, this has to stop, mm-hmm. something, something has to change. And what happened at that point then? What, what were the changes that you made that had a, had a real transformational impact? Well, it took it took for me to reach out to other brothers and to help, accountability, having accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was something that you know I only knew. I thought I didn't understand. I didn't know that pornography was such a uh, issue within the body of Christ. Um, I just knew that it was a handful of brothers that 
I had in the faith who would speak to me, and we would pray together. We would be on the phone crying out together to the Lord. You know, we would be fasting together, doing all these things, doing everything we can at this point to break this chain, to break this cycle. Um, but that's what, that was the starting point, speaking with other people about it and letting other people know, hey, this is my struggle, and I, I need help. Mm -hmm. And what was your, so what happened then with you and your wife at that point? Um, I mean, obviously she had been aware of your struggle from the time you two got together. Um, right. What were your conversations then like at that point when you started saying, okay, I, I've got to put some very real changes in my life with the accountability and all that? I mean, uh, what kind of effect did that have on your relationship? Um, well, she was a bit, she, I wouldn't say she was hardened, but she didn't really, she wanted to see fruit. She didn't just want to hear me talk about it. And for a long time, even when I had accountability, I still would kind of talk about it because I made provision to watch it still. And it wasn't as often as I used to, but nevertheless, uh, she still didn't really see much tangible change in my life. And so she would just look at it like, okay, you're just talking. You know, mm -hmm. you're saying this, you're, you're, you're crying about this, you know, because there'll be times that I would give in to pornography and I wouldn't want to confess it to her, but nevertheless, you know, the Lord will already let her know, you know, we're one flesh, so I can't keep things like that from her. Um, and so, you know, I would confess it to her, I'll cry out and I'll tell her I don't want this anymore, but yet my eyes still continued in that pattern. Mm -hmm. And so that's what she's seen. And so it wasn't until, you know, she, she wanted to see change. She didn't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the effect that it had on her. Yeah, and so uh, obviously change did start happening. Um, and so how did that affect her over time? Was she able to soften? Was she able to? I mean, did it? Did it? So, Jared, I guess what I'm asking is, did you know eliminating porn from your life? improve your marriage absolutely um <clears throat> it absolutely did because um intimacy uh just not even just in the physical sense but just um <clears throat> just my just being like my emotions um because the pornography had hardened me so much where like i would be cold towards her and i would be angry with my children because there's something about pornography it's like when you don't have it for a while it's just like you, <clears throat> you know, you start to get, you almost have these, almost like some type of side effect or something. It's um, like withdrawal symptoms or something. I, I, I really can't explain it, but it, it had an effect on us in a number of ways. So emotionally, uh, physically, but yes, it definitely, um, it's in continuing. It's a, it's a continual process because every single day, day I have to deny myself, you know, keeping my wife in mind and keeping the Lord in mind in the ministry that he's given me mm -hmm. in mind. So many people reach out to us all the time and, you know, they look to us for help. And so I, I really can't provide much wisdom and guidance for people if I'm not applying it in my own life. Um, but she's seeing it. She's seeing it lived out in my life where she doesn't have to worry so much about checking reports and mm -hmm. check phones and stuff like that. She doesn't have to worry so much that when she leaves the house, whether if I'm going to do something behind her back because she's trusting and learning that I do desire to have true intimacy with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's such a hopeful message for a lot of listeners out there and especially wives out there who are wondering, you know, can, can there really be any change in a man who's been tangled up in pornography? And I think that's the, the great message of your story and also what you're doing in God over porn, that there, there are environments, there are communities, there are groups where real change is happening, where people are really getting set free. Um, and so there's great hope in that. And so I wanted to see if you would now tell us a little bit more about how you got called in this ministry and kind of what, what God Over Porn is um, really about and what you're, you're wanting to offer to people who are struggling with pornography. Um, well, again, it started... Just when um, a, a group of brothers, you know, just a few of us, along with my wife, you know, we had the conversation. We knew that pornography was a serious issue amongst us uh, in our families and everything. And so 
we said we need to do something about it. And so I would pray about it. Um, and there were certain things, there were certain things in particular that I noticed about the porn industry that I wanted to expose. And so, for example, like they would have various like production companies that were like were evil symbolically. For example, one's name was Evil Angel. And so I would say, Evil Angel, well, what does Evil Angel, what does an Evil Angel have to do with pornography? And so, um, I just said to myself, well, the evil, well, Satan is an evil angel. Demons are evil angels. Mm-hmm. I said that this pornography certainly is a demonic uh, industry, you know. And so our understanding of this is that it's not our battle is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So we're not taking a fight to porn stars. You mm-hmm. know, we are exposing the evil works of darkness within the porn industry, so that the believer who has spiritual eyes can see that the, the enemy is using this to keep them bound. Mm-hmm. And so we're exposing the truth so that people can be set free because Jesus said in his word that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Um, and so I wanted to expose these elements, but the Lord let me know that I needed to take the plank out of my own eye first. And so that meant I needed to expose my own transgressions instead of talking about how bad pornography um, was and mm-hmm. is. Well, and so, so, you know, talking about the evil aspects of the industry, is that is that really kind of how you came to the name, God Over Porn? Absolutely. Um, well, because the, there's actually a ministry uh, by a, a Christian rapper named Bizzle, and he has God Over Money. And so when we were first thinking of a name, I was like, um, I, I tried to throw out some different names with some triple X or something in there, Um but they didn't like, like, I had another brother named Kendrick and my wife. We were having this conversation amongst ourselves. And so as a joke, I said, God over porn. Mm-hmm. And then my wife and Kendrick were like, hey, that's great. Stick with that. And the Lord gave us the verse, Ephesians 5.11, to take no part in the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Mm-hmm. And so um, we went with that. And that's that's just where we started off. So let our listeners know a little bit about what it is that you guys do in ministry. Like, like what kind of resources does uh, God Over Porn provide? What is sort of what you're trying to do in ministry in terms of helping people overcome porn? What are some of the practical tools that you guys have? Um, well, right now um, we have uh, we just released some accountability journals. Because, again, we believe that accountability is absolutely crucial, is a crucial tool in this battle against pornography. As long as a Christian is a lone soldier, a lone ranger, if you will, uh, the enemy will will devour you, mm-hmm. you know, if not in community. And so we, we thrive and we push for that. And so among leadership, that's, that's something that we're pushing to do. Like, we're all accountable to one another. We all receive... Uh, reports of our activity on our phones or other other uh, things we may have, and um, so we, accountability is crucial. James five sixteen says, "Confess your sins one to another, so that you may be healed." Um, and so we have that. So the accountability journal is just one taking an inventory of their personal walk with Christ, and just it's not even it's not so much about pornography. That the, um, as far as the journal is concerned, it's not just. A, addressing pornography. It's talking about anything that's going on in your life with the Lord, because we truly do believe that who you are in private is who you are. Mm -hmm. And so that's where integrity starts. So in Psalm 25, 21 is one of my favorites where David said, let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on you. And so for many of us, the walls of integrity have been just broken down due to the repeated practice of living in sin in private while living like a Christian among everybody else. So we think that it's important that we, like, people are being broken, you know, that we are broken, understanding that we're nothing in ourselves, that we are weak without Christ. And it is okay to be in that place because when Mm -hmm. we're weak, then that's when Christ is made strong in us and his Mm -hmm. power is made perfect in weakness. So it's okay to be weak. It's okay. You don't have to be self-sufficient. Um, so we have the accountability journals that we uh, have that we just released last month. We also have the app that we have on our phone where we send out accountability alerts. We just send out alerts twice a day, 10 in the morning, 10 at night, just with scripture and just other messages of encouragement to keep fighting the good fight. Uh, we have a Bible reading plan that we're producing, and I'm also working on a book 
called the secret place because, again, it's all about that, that intimacy with the Lord because we believe that if you are a genuine Christian, you desire to have a genuine, pure relationship with the Lord, and it starts by practicing integrity and living tr- living the truth in private. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, obviously we live in a mobile world. Uh, you know, d- there's tons of devices out there, and you mentioned that even your leadership team and and you guys are uh, holding one another accountable uh, for those devices. Is Do you have any practical tips that you can give to some of our listeners of some ways that they could do that? I mean, to, to maybe be safer on, on the mobile devices that are out there? Absolutely. Um, we are partnered with um, Covenant Eyes as well as Accountable to You. Um, they are. They provide wonderful uh, accountability software. You know, I personally use Accountable to You. Um, I know others use Co- Covenant Eyes, but um, those are great tools to use. Again, these are tools. We do not use these things. These are not a. Sol- this, it's the software is not the solution. Mm-hmm. Christ is the solution, but it is a tool uh, to help us to walk in integrity. Um, so yes, those those two things are are great. You know, you can have hourly alerts sent to someone. Obviously, we would recommend choosing someone that you can trust, uh, that you can confide in. Uh, we don't do this with random strangers. You know, these are people that know, like we know, as leadership, we know each other. Right. Uh, and so you want to have someone that you know, someone that you can trust, that you can confide in with your secrets. Um, and so, but those two softwares, are, I think, are very good to mm-hmm. someone. So, Jared, we've got a couple minutes left uh, on the broadcast here. So, um, what are just some maybe final insights you would want to give to our listeners, and then and then let our listeners know how they can access your ministry and and get the app and just some other resources that you might think be help would be helpful. All right. Um, well, yes, I, I would just uh, reiterate the importance of um, humbling yourself before the Lord. Uh, just being truthful with yourself, um, just being honest. You know, the Bible tells us that one of the weapons of our warfare is the belt of truth. So we have to be con- brutally honest with mm-hmm. ourselves and honest with the Lord. I mean, the Lord, he knows everything about you already to begin with. Like before you were even formed in a womb, he knew you. So there's nothing about you that he doesn't know. And so you can confide in him about your deepest, darkest, darkest secrets. And he's not going to look at you with shame or he's not going to look at you uh, with disgust because he loves you and he always has and always will. Yes. So we must be honest with him, we must be honest with ourselves, and we must be honest with other people if we truly desire to walk in freedom. Because as long as we, if we make excuses and if we make provision for it, then this thing is always going to continue to abuse us. Mm-hmm. Our relationship with pornography is like an abusive relationship, and you're the victim that's making an excuse for your abuser to continue to beat you. Mm-hmm. And when you take the, you, you, when you confess it, you expose it, and it, that power that pornography has on you will break because now the light is shining on it. Um, and so with that being said, you can ask, like, you can connect with us. Our website is www.godoverporn.org. Um, we're on Instagram at godoverporn as well as Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr. Uh, we believe that since pornography is so pervasive, it's all over social media, we felt the need to be on every single social media platform mm-hmm. because it, it, porn is everywhere. And so we want to shine the truth of God's gospel everywhere. Um, so we, we're, 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 you can connect with us. Um, again, my name is Jared Miller Sr. You can certainly connect with me on Facebook. I'll be more than willing to talk to you Um we have a team of people that would be willing to help you. We have groups online on Facebook as well. Uh, we have married groups uh, for men, married groups for women. We have invite for singles, uh, single men, single women. <clears throat> we have male moderators for the men's groups, and we have female moderators for the females. Um, we believe that we should do everything in decency and in order. Yeah. Uh, and, and so... Well, Jared, yeah, thank you so much for being on the the program, and we will post this information to our website and our feeds as well when we air the broadcast, and so thank you again for being with us, Um, and listeners, we look forward to having you back here again next week on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. 
Visit us online at puresexradio.com. 